Today I'll be going through the Lenovo P53s. We'll look at some of the features and then upgrade the RAM and hard drive, installing a fresh copy of Windows 10 afterwards. This model is very similar to the T590, the T490, and the P43s, so much so that all four share the same user guide. The only main difference besides the form factor is that the P models come with discrete graphics while the T models have processor-only graphics. All the models will have the same external connectors. On this side we have USB-C and or charger, Thunderbolt, additional connector for the docking station, a USB 3.1 connector, an HDMI out, a 3.5mm headset connector, and a micro SD card slot. On the other side there's a smart card reader, an always on USB 3.1, Ethernet, fan exhaust port is here, and security lock slot. The only connection on the back is a nano SIM card slot for the use with wireless WAN. On the 15 inch models you'll have the number pad here, the 14 inch models won't have this and the keyboard will be centered. Now let's look at upgrading some of our components. These processes will be identical for all four models. The laptop will come with soldered RAM but there's also a dim slot for additional RAM. The processor limits RAM speed to 2400 MHz but I tried both 2400 and 2666 MHz versions and they both worked. I'm also going to upgrade to a 1TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVM SSD. Now you can clone the hard drive, but I like to start with a fresh installation of Windows. To do this, you can create a USB installation disk from Microsoft's website. Download the utility and follow the instructions. Since these models only come with a built-in battery, you'll want to make sure that you have disabled it before we open the back. To do this, first make sure to turn off Fast Startup in Windows. Then we'll have to go into our BIOS. Press Enter and F1 during boot up. Go over to the config and down to power. Scroll down to disable built-in battery and click enter. Click yes and the computer will shut down. There are eight screws on the 15 inch model, six on the 14 inch. Unscrew them until they're loose. They won't come out because they're attached to the base cover assembly. The cover wasn't easy to remove. Start at the top and work your way around to the right side and it should start popping off slowly. If you use a pry tool, this will also help. Once you get the base off, it'll expose all the components we'll need to access. You can see from here into the right is one solid piece. All models will share this common system board. That's also why you'll see some gaps on the 15 inch models. The extra width is on the left side and that's why there's ribbon connectors for the connector assemblies on this side. The right side connectors are all part of the system board and there's quite a bit of dead space on the 15 inch models allowing for this commonality. So here's the SSD we'll be replacing. Here's the WAN slot. Here's the extra RAM slot, the other RAM is soldered to the system board. Processor, heat sink, and if you have a P model, here's where the GPU is located. Let's put in some extra RAM. I've chosen an additional 16 GB stick of DDR4 2666 MHz, but again, it'll run at 2400 MHz. Simply push it in at a slight angle and snap it down. Now onto the SSD. I found that the screw was torqued pretty hard and had to use a Phillips head with a better grip to get it loose. Slide the existing SSD out. We'll be replacing it with our 1TB Samsung. It'll almost snap in, so make sure it's seated correctly. If you get a startup detection warning, then you didn't push it in far enough. Replace the cover, snapping it back down and screwing it in place. Since we disabled the battery, we'll need adapter power to start up the first time. We're also going to install Windows from the USB key we made earlier onto the blank SSD. The laptop will boot from the USB and bring up the Windows setup program. Serial numbers are already stored in the machine and setup utility will automatically install the correct version. Continue by following the installation instructions. Windows will eventually ask for a wireless network to start downloading and updating drivers. Now that Windows is installed, we can see from the system information that the RAM is updated to 24 gigabytes. If you're using a Samsung SSD, you'll want to download Samsung Magician to help you manage the hardware. My drive had out-of-date firmware, so I updated it. After that, you can run performance metrics. I also ran Crystal Disk Mark comparisons on the 970 EVO Plus. I compared them to the original SSD shipped from Lenovo, which happened to be a Samsung PM981A. 
you can see that the 970 EVO Plus had better write speeds and random read-write performance as well. Another thing you want to do is make sure you have the latest drivers from Lenovo. Go to their support page, type in the laptop model, in this case the P53S, click Drivers and Software, and you'll see a list of drivers for your machine. Download and install the applicable ones. You can also install Lenovo Vantage application to make sure your machine stays up to date automatically. I paired this laptop with a ThinkPad Ultra docking station. It's quick to engage and release with the tab here. You can see it's actually three connectors. It'll provide power over USB-C and will also use a Thunderbolt 3 port. In the back we have a lot of ports. Still a VGA connector, two display ports, an HDMI power adapter, four USB 3.1 connectors, two USB-C connectors, and Ethernet. There's also an audio connector here. Thank you for watching and feel free to leave questions and comments for the community below.